I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Bacon. Hello. Bacon? I'm Sam Healy. Are you saying hello to bacon? Or no. I'm just hungry. Hello, bacon. My I only friend. had oatmeal this morning, and I would have liked to have had bacon instead. Put bacon in it? No. I don't know that that would make oatmeal That'd be better. That would pretty good, I think. Every, I no, know. bacon makes everything better. Well, That's I would argue true. that anything makes oatmeal better, but... <laughs> <laughs> Including bacon. But it's, if you're sitting with a bowl, you're like, what would make this better? Stomach. Go to the grocery store, look down an aisle. <laughs> Anything. I agree. <laughs> no one's ever like, oatmeal? Breakfast mm, of... Perfect, as it is. Is oatmeal something like people crave? Like, oh, I think so, yeah, I think so. I eat it because it fills me. No, I know I why. I know it's also super cheap. And it gets me through like more than half the day. And what also fills you is reading a good book. And it probably tastes as good. Pretty sure Welcome. reading a book doesn't fill my stomach. No. Welcome to Board Just Game saying. Breakfast, where we talk about board games and, and food. breakfast. Well, it's, it's, you it's get true. what you pay for. Um, yeah. So, okay. uh, what's going on? To the, today, later on today, we'll be doing a top 10 list on our top 10 exploration games. Tomorrow, we're going to be playing a live game of Grim Masquerade. That's uh, 24 hours from now. Um, reviews and other stuff will be going up all in there. Memorial Day weekend is around the corner. So uh, that next week, uh, if you're in the UK, you can say hi to me or Z. And if you're in Atlanta, you can say hi to Sam and Roy. So we're all, we're all over the place. We're, we're covering everything now, except apparently Tabletop Day, which is next weekend oh. during both of those. Okay. So if you're in Pensacola, Chris might go to Tabletop Day. <laughs> Did I say Pensacola? Miami. Why there did you be. say Pensacola? Eh, it's on the brain. Good night. Pensacola, no. My All right. Well, we're talking about board games. Let's get started <coughs> with the board game news. <laughs> All right. Not a ton of news in the board game world. And don't forget, if you want to see a short version of this, I put up a Dice Tower digest of news each week. But, okay, let's take a look at some of the news. First of all, we have Elder Scrolls Call to Arms. Uh, this is from Odyphius Entertainment. They're really big on doing the, you know, licensed games to miniatures. Mm -hmm. And this is not a big surprise since they've done the future version of this. What's it called? You like it. Um, oh, Fallout. They've done the Fallout miniatures already. Mm -hmm. So, this is weird to me slightly. I mean, I love Elder Scrolls. I specifically like uh, Skyrim a lot. Um, it's just that Skyrim is this huge, open-ended universe. Mm -hmm. How do you do that in a board game? That's a harder thing to do, I think. Mm. Sure. So it says... They it, did make a Fallout board game, which also is an open-ended universe, and they did it with, you know, following a few quests. It's a much smaller scale, of course. Well, maybe this will be similar. It says, you and your band of heroes set out on narrative-driven scenarios ranging from treasure-seeking dungeon drives to Tamriel battles. It includes miniatures such as fan favorites as Had Hadvar, Ryloth. Mm -hmm. I don't know any of these people. Yeah, but them. Ulfric Stormcloak, I remember him. Because yeah. you can either join him or, not. or kill him. Yes. And Lydia's in the game. Lydia! If you play Lydia, you just run around in circles. <laughs> I'm here. Who's Lydia? She's Have you played Skyrim? Yeah, I know. She's the very first companion you get. They say, hey, here's your companion, Lydia. And everywhere you run, Lydia follows. Oh, she's the one that like will follow into your house. And yeah, 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 yeah. She's, she's, she, yeah, she stays and watches your house if you need. That's need, right. Yeah. Yeah, and you, I'd run upstairs, and she'd go up there like a dog. She's like a lost dog. I'd go downstairs. No. She follows me. That's <laughs> I'm like, what? Lydia, everyone I'm still knows, in the house. Everyone knows Lydia because she's your first companion, and usually you trade her off. I yeah. don't, And then, man. No, I did trade her off. Then when I got married, I like said I do to my wife, no, they, they, you get married in game. I turn, and there's Lydia. <laughs> I was like, sorry, Lydia. <laughs> so then when I go to my house, I into this game, there's, I mean, there's kids running around the house, and your wife is there doing whatever, or lot. your husband. It doesn't matter. You, know, you can marry anybody. And... <clears throat> And Lydia's sitting in the house, too. I was like, hey, Lydia, what's up? 
And if this you, discussion took a very strange. If you uh, kill your wife turn. in the game, which you shouldn't, Lydia will attack you and take you out. Why would you know that? I read it on the internet somewhere. I thought so I played so this game a lot and knew a lot about it. I didn't know you could do any of that. We should. You can get married. Talk about the next piece I of news, I think. I, yeah, I think we <laughs> before should move you keep on. In, before you incriminating continue you. So. Anyway, okay, game. so you can, in, you can lead the force of the Stormcloaks or the Imperial Legions and then fight in a civil war. So it looks like there's almost a miniature style combat thing in this game. No death clause, though. <laughs> I want to be able to shout. Dragon whatever shouts, whatever yeah. the shouts are. Dave, David L. says, if the, min, uh, if the minis are metal, just make Lydia a magnet. <laughs> All right. Spiel des Jahres awards have been nominated. <coughs> the nominations have been announced yeah. for the Spiel des Jahres. These are for 2019. Now, Spiel des Jahres is the biggest awards in the industry. They are announced in, um, Germany. Uh, in Germany. And they're... They have a kind of a, an odd range of dates. It's I, I want to say it's like any game that was done in a, in a year's time, but I'm not quite sure. And it has to be printed right. in Germany. Right. So sometimes you'll see an older game. It just happened to be printed in Germany right. that year. They also have three awards. They have a Kids Award a, um, uh, and a Kennerspiel. Anyway, let's take a look at the big it's award first. The Gamers Game Award and the regular best game of the year for families. Yeah. This is the best game of the year for families, this slide here. So it shows the three nominees, which are Just One, Werewords, and I think it's Llama, but it might be L-A-M-A. I don't know what. Yeah, Llama's fine. But Llama has two L's. Maybe in Germany it only has one? Sure. So it's I play. not going to win. Who cares? <laughs> That's probably true. Uh, what do you put your money on to win? Uh, just one. I agree. That's such a popular party game. I haven't even played any of those games, and that's the one I would pick just because I know it's the one that blew my mind more was popular. Llama blew my mind. I looked up a how to play review or you know, read the rules, saw it. People are comparing it to Uno. It's basically like Uno. That's ouch. So the recommended list shows a bunch of games there. Uh, I have not played Bell Roddy or Dizzle. They just announced in America. That's a rolling right. Baby. Imhotep the Duel. Mm -hmm. You played that one? No. It's not out in English. It's not out. Who Did It is a kids game. That one boggles my mind that that one was nominated for not the kids category. Mm -hmm. Reef, boo, that it was not one of the three nominees because Reef's awesome. And Sherlock, which is a very strange. I played one of them. It's a very strange. Try to figure out a case from a bunch of cards, but you can't really share information, and some information is important and not. It's kind of a weird one. I want to play another one before I decide. Mm -hmm. All right. Then the Kenner Spiel. Now, we may disagree or agree on the other ones, but uh, they did a pretty good job on the this Kenner is Spiel. A good, no, this is a good selection of games. Carpe Diem, Detective, and Wingspan. Three wow. really solid games. Yep. Uh, although I didn't play Carpe Diem, but I'm <coughs> trusting that Z wouldn't lie to me. Carpet Diem is a very good Stefan Feld game. It's one of his best games in years. Which one wins? <sighs> Wingspan. Well, probably. no, Wingspan is like super popular in America. I don't know. The, uh, Stefan Feld is very popular. I guess. I could, uh, yeah, I mean. But if I had to pick one based on just the, how, what I think, what I would give it to, Carpe Diem. Okay, I'll say I, I, I'm leaning a little bit towards Wingspan. I'll say Detective's the odd one out. Yeah. Detective so. is kind of like the, it's an honor to have been nominated. Yeah, and it deserves to be nominated, don't get me wrong, sure, but sure. I don't think it's going to win, yeah. Yep. It's a very unique game. I've, I've, I've only played Detective, um, but I see Wingspan being played everywhere I look. Everybody's talking about it. Sure, that. if there's a people's choice, right. it has it. Yeah. Um, Architects of the West Kingdom, Lowlands, Newton, and Paper Tales were the recommended this is solid across the board. Yeah. Architects would be the one that I would have chosen, but sure. that's just me. And then the Kinderspiel, this is the one we know the least about. Uh, Fabulantica, Go Gecko Go, and Tal Der Wickinger from Haba. Oh, I've seen that one. I don't know what the name of it is. Oh, Valley of the Vikings. Valley of the Vikings. Um, on the recommended list, I I've played Concept Kids, Magic Maze Kids, uh, Monster Band, 
and that one, uh, what's that one, a monster match. I played the four in the middle. <laughs> yeah, right. That's actually so, more than usually. Concept Kids and Magic Maze Kids are both really, I mean, Magic Maze Kids is like amazing. Right. Maybe it's a little too complex, and that's why I didn't make the top three. But Who do you think is going to win? Uh, I'll go with Fabio game. Lantica. This game. Yeah. Well, Haba and Zach almost always get one in. That's true. Almost every year. And then there's one other company. Sometimes it's Pegasus, sometimes Dreymaki or Spiel, which is they got the monster band down there. The fact that Repo's got one in there is pretty neat. And, oh, and Queen. Queen usually has one in there. They didn't get the top. In fact, Queen got shut out this year. Normally, Queen has a spiel. Hmm. You're right. They don't have anything in any category, right? Yeah. I got to go with Fabulantica, too. It's the best one up there. I, I've never played any of them. All right. Let's go back to normal news. <laughs> Riot Quest. This is a new hybrid miniatures board game from Privateer Quest. It's probably closer to miniatures than board game. Looks like squad versus squad. It's in the Iron Kingdom's universe. I'm waiting What's for that? it. I'm waiting for it. Come on, say it. What am I supposed to say? About the title. It's a riot? What about That it? is like super Gennaro title. Worse than some of the ones you guys have really railed against. Oh, well, the word riot is not used in games as much. <clears throat> this is a quest, and it's a riot, man! I don't like that the two fonts are so dissimilar. <laughs> That's another thing, yeah. That I mean, doesn't that doesn't on. bother me because it's it's two fonts and it's deliberately done that way. It looks like they actually that looks like two pieces of two different titles that somebody stitched together All in, right. in like paint. So the game is a little bit crazy. The Riot Quest starter Ooh, box crazy. comes with well no, I'm saying that it's chaotic. Has five hobby miniatures with stat cards. So you have Balthazar Bamfist. You have Gubbin, the demolitions expert. That may just be too crazy to carry all those explosives. Sir Dreyfus is a powerful technological knight, while Dez is the Dreyfus. token big guy with a bazooka. Finally, Iris Fortune Hunter of Ios is a dark, mysterious rogue with powers untold. Bam fist. <laughs> right? That's what you said. Bam fist. Balthazar Bam Alrighty, fist. Alrighty. Well, the Dice Tower Awards nominations were also done. <laughs> Ours are more specific games that came out in 2018. And... You can watch a video for all the information on that, but here's a quick, just the best games of the year is the nominations for this one. I did not vote in these awards, although I think you guys both did. That's I mostly did. good yeah. picks. <laughs> Nine out of ten? <laughs> well, I, I didn't say anything. I said that's mostly good picks. I was very tactful. We'll see which one wins. It. There's a lot of... Uh, We'll, we'll see. It's a lot of good games. Yeah. No matter what, it's a good selection of games. Court of the Dead Mourner's Call yeah, is coming out from, soon. Remember this from Gamma last year. I know. Yes, I that is the... where we first saw it at Gamma last year. They were showing it off, and I thought it was coming soon. In fact, here's the board in case you've forgotten what it looks like. Um, has some big miniatures moving around. This is from Artwork uh, is blah, 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 blah. this is from uh, the OP, I believe. This is a bigger game than they normally do. They're normally doing smaller IP games. Okay. This looks super dark. I think you were interested in it because of that. Yeah, the darker the better. Yeah, they uh, were. There's three factions. Bone, flesh, and spirit. Yeah. This is based, I want to say, on some sort of miniatures line. It's based on some IP that they already have. I, uh, they, make, uh, they make miniatures, like really expensive, fine miniatures, and they have comic books. And It's from, it's developed by Project Raygun. They're a designer collectible division that's underneath the OP. Okay, there you go. So they developed this world already. Right, and now they're turning it into a board game. Got it. All right. Because I know they sell these busts, these miniatures, and they are, again, highly detailed collector pieces for hundreds of dollars. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Arkham Horror, the card game, has a new expansion, The Blob That Ate Everything. This actually... <coughs> This actually is, so far, the one I'm most interested in because I like the blob-type mm -hmm. bad guy, and this is a little bit different than Arkham Horror. In fact, I don't. there's not much blob stuff in the Arkham Horror Elder Char universe. Okay. If it is, it's there as a, a monster. Oh, look, there's a blob. This, like the blob is coming to take over everything. I like that theming. Yeah, this is uh, coming out in... Uh, <coughs> 
This is coming out of Gen Con. It's not coming out. They have an event. They are running at Gen Con. <coughs> if you want to be a part of it, you have to sign up for the event. You can't buy this technically as of right now, but if uh, the past holds true, normally these things become available a few months after they do their big event at Gen Con. Mm. And they the actually idea, say that. Yeah, okay. So the idea is here that this is m basically massively multiplayer. I think they can play up to 96 people in a, with a single scenario. They all belong to one group. And this blob is eating everything. It'll start eating your cards. It'll start eating your sanity. It'll start eating your ability to speak. Uh, It'll start eating everything. All right. So I don't I was okay with some of that. With what? It could eat my sanity. Just not my shoes. It probably eat your hat. Oh! All right. It sounds bizarre and kind of quirky on purpose. But I like the quirkiness. That's why yeah, yeah, it attracts right. me more. This is definitely one that's more tongue-in-cheek. So there's a new expansion coming from Restoration Games for Fireball Island, Spider Springs. Uh, this is not going to be kickstarted. You oh, can just man. get it. That You are stealing spider eggs. Which, no. Why would you do that? This is what I told Justin when I, they were showing me the game. I said, if the guys come in the helicopter, I'm like, what's that egg? It's a spider egg. You're not getting on board. <laughs> it's you, but no egg. Uh -huh. And if you like the egg that much, you can wait for the next chopper. Yeah. I think we're all agreed on that, yeah, right? No, 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 no. But this game comes with a bunch of little spiders that can get knocked. You actually drop the spiders into the volcano. Okay. And then you drop the fireballs and they, like, put the spiders all over the island. And if they hit you, the spider then is on you and all, whatever. And then there is eggs that do give you points if you get them. <laughs> you can also bounce them off, like that thing there, you can launch the spiders out. There's another little island to go to. You want to go to that island to get the spider eggs, which seems like, a, again, Good idea. thematically a bad idea. Come on has opened a new, well, their first board game store. Mm -hmm. This is in Singapore. Yep. Uh, which, once again, I would love to be in Singapore. But, of course, considering half the staff of Come On seems to be based in Singapore, this makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's going to sell Come On products, but also other things. So it looks to me very similar to the Fantasy Flight Expo, or the Fantasy Center, Flight or whatever they call Center, it. whatever yeah. it's called. I went in there. They have a lot of Fantasy Flight games, but they got Games Workshop. They got Come On things. Same thing here. Cool. So... Uh, Cool, I wish I could be there. I would love if someone could get a video of this place and send it to us. Um, there's some more shots of the store itself with, you know, you, you paint it miniatures and things to play. That's awesome, man. Sam would be living there. They would have a picture of Sam next to the, blood, the permanent blood rage board. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's the board game news. Let's jump to some contributors. Hello fellow gamers, so this week we have a lot of game for a little bit of money and I would expect to see that within the next few weeks as well because we do have the UK Game Expo coming up and we have Origins Game Fair that's right after that so a lot of people are going to be saving their money and companies know that. But, like I said, it's a great time to pick up some really great games for a little bit of cash. I think last week's total was, I don't know, maybe like $120 for all four games that we looked at. So, let's get started. Featured this week, we have 100 Tori by Pencil First Games. This is for one to four wanderers looking to stroll through a Japanese garden, sightseeing and collecting tokens for 45 minutes as players will be placing tiles to link landmarks and gaining extra points for Tori's past in this abstract puzzle style game that encourages introverts to socialize with locals without them actually having to leave the house. Now, this little box of Zen starts at $39 and requires absolutely no actual walking. Speaking of gardens with abnormal amounts of foot traffic we have Kadama 3D by Indie Boards and Cards. This is for two to four tree spirits who love taking care of their trees as players will be trying to put together matching symbols on 3D branches for about 30 minutes. However, this game does have a twist from the original, creating a more in-depth branch selection process as players will be programming which branches they can select on their next round. If you want to build trees out of processed tree materials, then a pledge of $24 will get you started. Now for something a little more grim, we have Dice Upon a Time by Corona Games, which calls upon two to four fairy tale celebrities who want to journey across the land and complete quests and do what fairy tale figures do best. Meddle in the affairs of 
everyone else for about 45 to 60 minutes as players will be stacking their dice on the roads they travel to collect goods, win bids, and even block opponents from traveling to selected locations. This dice stacking game starts at $39, and our next game's nostalgia is just out of this world with... Space Invaders by 612 Entertainment. This is for two to four arcade junkies who have not gotten scared off by my puns just yet and enjoy deck building as players try to fight back alien invaders while collecting equipment and trying not to get overrun. This blast from the past runs $30. And lastly, we have even more space games because space is like so hot right now with... Imperium Contention by Contention Games. This 4X game ditches the minis for cards as two to four faction leaders will build decks and fight over an unfathomable amount of space for 90 minutes. Because let's be honest, everyone just wants to be a space pirate in this simultaneous action selection game that has a base price of $44. Thanks so much for joining me this week, guys. If you want to know more about any of the Kickstarters that you saw here today, then join me at gloryhound.com as we talk about all these Kickstarters in depth and if we would back them or not. It is a live show at Friday, noon Mountain Standard Time. So if you can catch it then, that's the best part because we all get to talk and converse about these games. But if not, it is always on my YouTube channel, so you can check that out as well. Other than that, I guess I will see you guys all next week. Don't think of this as the ending. Think of this as the beginning of the end. You know, I never understood that. The end is the end. What do you want me to say? So with that said, we come to our last monthly lock and load episode. We went 5 -0. Plus, I'm going to feature other lock and load games in the future. Today is Battles on Demand. What's Battles on Demand? Well, you demand a battle and you get it. Like this. How does it work? Well, you go on their website, you click Battles on Demand, you choose your battle, he prints it, ships it to you, and that's it! Come on, man! Can't get easier than that. But Paul, shut up! The majority of these games are very easy. 10-page rulebook, not many counters, so there's not that much clutter. A map, maybe two, maybe three, like this one here. Raid and Repost, second edition. This is the Cold War turned hot. The Soviets invade West Germany. One sheet of thick counters, 11 really are playing pieces, the other is administrative stuff, and an area-to-area -area map. You don't want to do alternative history, you want to fight Normandy, no problem, here you go. The Devil's Beach, the Omaha landings, so this is just focused on one sector of the landings, not Sword, not Juno. Here you get a bigger map, it's in two pieces. Same type of rulebook, nine pages, big font, lots of pictures. You get a couple of player aid charts and also some terrain effect charts. And not a lot of counters, great for the beginner. You know, I'm sure a few of you are saying, what's on the counter? What's that X? Hey, why is there an E? And why is there a little writing that you can't even see on the counter? Well, thank God I'm here to explain this to you. This is a platoon level game, meaning that it's a much bigger scale. So every chit, when you move them, you move about 40 to 60 men, as opposed to tactical, where you move two, one, or five men. So at this scale, we use NATO symbols. So if you see on the top, the X means infantry. The middle row, special forces rangers, airborne, and heavy machine guns. But Paul, I don't want to fight World War II, I want cowboys and Indians. Well, my little half marble, we got just that. Bloody Mohawk, the French and Indian War. Four page rule book, one sheet of thick, beautiful counters, and 12 maps. Yep, 12. So that ends our month run for Lock and Load Publishing. Check out their website, they have way more games than I showed you. Sci-fi games, support in their forums. All in all, great company to dab your fingers into war games. Thank you for watching. If you want to know more about war games, please check out my channel, and I'll see you next week with another company. Hey folks, welcome back to another Gamer Stereotypes segment. Today we're talking about the Absentee Gamer. Hmm? Exactly. The Absentee Gamer is that person who that works. is doing so smart. everything else during the rules explanation except listening to the rules explanation. And more often than not, they will be the person who will, during the game, while you're actually playing, <laughs> they are going to be... <laughs> there we um, go. Yeah, there's a... I wasn't going to 
say anything about it. I'm just sitting here. What are you talking about? <clears throat> yeah, okay. I can't do it. But uh, anyway, they're the person in the middle of the game that will, will talk about, I didn't know you could do that, or... But I didn't. But You it, never said that. Yeah, you never said that. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yes, and it's especially, I don't know, I think it might be heightened now because we have these little things and uh, these things that are around down, the table Grandpa. all hey, man, the time. Get rid of this electronic stuff! Hey. Calm um, down. So it's, there's just more of a reason to not listen. To not listen, right? I and agree. so it just seems like it's a heightened problem that we're having in our society today as far as, as in our society in our hobby because people are so connected to their phones and to their devices and they're so distracting it's hard to focus next time you want to teach me rules make a video about it and I'll watch it on my phone <laughs> look i don't mind that you don't get all the rules in the first go through no of That's course you don't tough yeah and i even get that for a lot of people you hear the rules and halfway through you're like yeah, okay. I'll just have to pick this up as we play. Mm -hmm. I get that. But if that's you are true. clearly not listening, and then during the game you get something wrong, I'll be like, no, it's actually this. Okay, we're still good. Until you go, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's I've actually had, the had, problem. That's really the trigger. Right. It's the, if somebody's uh, a little aloof, you can't concentrate. Right. And then as we are playing, you're like, uh, I can go here, right? No, you can't. It's here or there. Okay. And, like, you kind of take it in stride, knowing part of the problem is you not being a great listener or being distracted. Cool. It's about the turning it back on the teacher. Right? It's that thing you were or talking about. Not, it's like, not turning it back on the teacher. It's turning it back on the game. I've had people say that when, you, when they missed a rule or whatever because they weren't listening, um, they say, well, this game is stupid. This game is dumb. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, no, this game isn't dumb. You weren't no, listening. No, 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 no. No, no. You are you listening. Are the dumbest rules learner in the history of entertainment. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. No, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Is that you weren't listening? It's and not I don't game subscribe that was stupid. to hyperbole <laughs> ever. <laughs> Let me just make that clear. <laughs> it's funny though. We used to have. There's also the person who they'll ask you a question. They'll be like, "Can I do this?" Yes. You can. or they'll say, "How do I do this?" You say, "You do this." Mm-hmm. The next turn. How do I do this? Like, okay, maybe you missed it the last time. Just explain but it. But do to it again. You. The third time, they're like, uh, I don't really know how to do this. That's just. <laughs> that's happened. A I few blame times. the schooling system. Uh, Somebody caught it. I, I tried not to say anything, but it said Ab Santa. Yes, I know. Somebody says Ab Santa. We spelled so. it wrong to see if you were noticing. <sighs> Woo. Yeah. Here, make sure you're, you're not absentee. But, uh, yeah, that's right. You need to pay attention, <laughs> folks. But, anyway, that's, that's, that's another gamer stereotype that we have. And it's, that's, I guess it's not really a stereotype. It's actually a, an actual type of It's a real condition. Person. Well, yeah, again, uh, we want to be really clear. that I understand... It yeah. could be the teacher's not a good teacher. Yes. Sure. And it could be that the game has a gazillion rules. Correct. Yes. It's how you handle it. Right. But also, sometimes, though, the person's not paying attention. It's not because the game has a lot of rules. I'll say, okay, everyone take five coins. Everyone takes five coins. All right, everyone do this. Okay, we're ready to go. One person's like, wait, wait, I don't got any money. I just said take five <laughs> coins. That's not, a, not understanding the rules. That's yeah. because you were busy beating the next level in that game. That's fine. Beat that next level. Yeah. Now you got no money. Yeah, yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. A lot of people are saying a lot of different things about it. Uh, 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 I know my brain skips a lot of stuff, Steven Sanders says, when reading and watching. So I think if I slam <coughs> two methods plus the actual game night explanation, I might get most of it. Uh, that's one way that he takes care of it. So before he learns a game, he watches the video, he reads the rules, and then he goes to learn how to play the game at, at a, another game night. Um, okay. Uh, he says if he misses something during the game, he knows that it was his fault. He says thanks for the reminder. Um, but unfortunately, most people don't do that. Um, no, the thing is, yeah, it's about the Not con most, but some, I guess. It's the way it's handled. Yeah, like none of us, I think, have a problem with people forgetting rules or need, needing a clarification. That happens sure. to everybody. It's about how, where you place that blame, if you want to use such a strong word. You know, it's the idea of 
How do I do this again? I, I, I don't remember that. That's fine. <laughs> of course I'll teach you that again. But yeah. you can't be like, well, this game is stupid, or it doesn't make sense, or you never said that. That's a, that's a good one. You never said that? Oh, boy. Another guy, Mark, says the learning rules is very difficult at best. They have internal logic, which doesn't always match real-world logic. It takes a few games for most people to grasp a, to grasp that. Sure, yes. sure, sure. But learning games is easier than teaching games. Again. Not necessarily. Yes. <laughs> no. If, if End of discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Period. But again, I don't blame the teacher because they're having a hard time teaching you too. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I understand that. Alrighty. Well, if you're watching this later on and not live, let us know what you think about that if you were paying attention. All yeah. right. Someone did say people who are watching this won't be offended by us saying any of this because they weren't they paying weren't. attention <laughs> anyway. A bunch of absentees. I would like to talk about all the people who aren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. Everyone got that? What? Check. <laughs> Alrighty, let's jump back to the contributors. It's your turn. Ooh. I guess I'm ready. I'm Ellen. Welcome to We Game Together. We are talking about love. <laughs> CV, which CV. I don't know what it stands for. I asked you. And you uh, like, it's Latin. Yeah, it's something, some something, smart something, something. Latin thing. That Basically, we don't know. the history of your life or your life story. Oh. That makes sense because there's three decks of cards that have like your life story your in life it. Your life story. <laughs> That's kind it. of the point of the game. I didn't know that until <laughs> now. Oh, uh, okay. This game was fun. I it will was say this light. game is very, very, very okay. It's very, very, very okay. <laughs> what actually, when I first rolled the dice, because you have dice and cards, you're like manipulating to whatever <sighs> to get stuff. It was super bored. I was like, ah, and then halfway through, it got better. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it, I think most of the game is just from like looking at the cards and and getting certain things. And oh, hey, this is my life, and, yeah. and that's kind of what they play up. But I'm more, I don't know. I, I pay attention to that a little bit. Yeah. But if you're not really into that, it's because it's just which kind of boring. I just kind I of been it was partial like just to. Kind of, kind of boring. Yeah, it's just fine. It's a fine game. It's a fine game. <laughs> um, it is kind of cool at the end. You're like, it's set collection. So you want to yeah, watch out for the colors. Yeah, most of your points come from set collection. Yeah. yeah. And there's some cards that give you in-game points. What's your specialty points. card? What's that called in the game? Your life goal. Your life goal. I met mine twice. Two life goals Two life met. goals. One so. life. <laughs> Beat <Yeah>. that. <laughs> um, our score was pretty close together. I actually thought I was going to get whomped. But yeah, it wasn't actually, we were within a few points. I, yeah, I mean, it's just a good game. You, you roll dice to uh, get symbols. The symbols let you buy cards. Once you buy cards, those cards come with certain symbols so you can try to buy other cards later. Yeah. You know, cards get progressively better and progressively harder to get. Mm -hmm. So, a pretty standard kind of a game. You've seen it a, a million times, yeah. but it's just a good little game. It's a good little game. It's, it's inexpensive, so if you True. can pick it up for cheap, it's just kind of a fun thing to Yeah, the one thing I noticed about it that I was like, what? Is the box is huge. There's not a lot yeah, in here, guys. This is light as a feather. It's ridiculously large. It is really huge. Somebody said they put like two expansions. Are there two expansions? An expansion and something else. They in put it. like a whole other CV game in there. Oh, is that what they did? Yeah. Okay. Well, but uh, so. anyway, that stuff. Big sure. We'll see ya. Bye bye. Two brothers set loose in a thrift store. This is Thrift Store Throwbacks. All right, Dice Tower, let's talk about some stuff. We got a big issue Real here. Big issue. We big have a issue. game this week called Pig Mania. That's a great name for a game, except for it already has another name. It's called Pass the Pigs. This is Pass the Pigs before Pass the Pigs was Pass the Pigs. And if you notice, it comes in a gigantic box. If you know anything about Pass the Pigs, the box nowadays is this. Which is much better because this box is this big and this box is all air. Because all it has is pigs. There's two pigs. That's it. And the pig pad. Mustn't forget that. Pig pad. Point is, is this box is ridiculous, man. This box is offensive. We're using so much natural resources here. We can only do one thing with this. We gotta do a good old fashioned box game. Oh, it's finally. It's been done too long. Let's let's touch on this real quick. Pass the pigs, great game. Great price your luck game. You get it real cheap. It's really fun. The pigs are dice, hilarious, and great. it's a price your luck game. Go get it. But this box is unacceptable. Shame, 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 shame. We told 
you to get abs and not welcome. I'm making bacon right now. Don't think I'm not gonna cook you up next. That's right. Out. You can box shake. Boom. That's right. That's right. Get. Oh my gosh. We're monsters. You're right. We, we take it back. Take it back. back. It's not your fault. We realize now we are too harsh in the box. It's not the box's fault. It's the publisher's no, fault. It's the publisher for making a bad box. I make a bad box. Yeah. Publishers don't clearly, blame the box. Clearly, the, the publisher has learned the errors in their ways. But nonetheless, that is Pigmania or Pass the Pigs. It's a great game. Honestly, we already know this game. You probably know it too. It's wonderful. Go get it. It's great. Super fun. If you like what we do in the silliness, you can subscribe to the Brothers Murph right here on YouTube. When we have a top ten out, top ten games that play at two player counts. Oh, it's the best. It's out right now in live. So go give that a a view if you don't mind. Indeed. And. Uh, in the meantime, we'll see you, you know, we'll see you while we're sitting in our guilt. In the first That's true, we will. 100%. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I hope that you are enjoying your board game breakfast. Today I want to talk about a project that I'm currently in the middle of, and that project is downsizing my game collection. As you can see, there are a lot of games behind me, but uh, what you can't see is that there are a whole bunch of games around me also, because honestly, I have too many games. So I've been going through them and trying to figure out how to create a collection that I really want to play, where I love every single game in the collection, and that is sort of a lean, mean gaming machine instead of a huge pile of games that exploded all over my apartment. And why would I do this, you might ask? Why would I ever give up one of my precious board games? And you know, you're right, they are precious to me. I love my collection. But I am starting to feel really constrained for space. And I'm also really getting a lot of decision paralysis or anxiety every time I try to play a game because there's just too many of them in the apartment. So what I am planning to do is I'm actually creating a YouTube series. So if you care, you can go to Beyond Solitaire, which is my YouTube channel, and check out The Decluttering, where I'm going to be listing all of the activities that I'm doing to downsize my collection. But I'm doing it because I want my gaming life to be excellent. Not just good, not like, oh wow, I have a lot of games. But every time I pick a game off my shelf and take it to the table, I want to either have a review copy or have a game that I really, really love and I'm playing it purely for my own enjoyment and because I really think that it's the best option I had for that night. If you've already downsized your collection, please leave a comment with a tip for me because Lord knows I need it. And if you're one of those people who's starting to wonder if more is necessarily better, then I highly encourage you to take this journey with me, If even if that just means taking a look at your game collection and making sure that it's the size that you really want. Happy gaming! I'm very discouraged. Hi everybody, welcome back to 10 for 10. Today I'm gonna to be giving you 10 companies and you guys are going to sort them by the year the company got started. Got it? No, I don't hear nothing. You won the last three in a row. Here no, we go. I don't care. Rio Grande Games. 2018. Pegasus Spiel. 2019. CGE or Czech Games Edition. 2020. Stronghold Games. Not yet found it. Portal <laughs> Games. <laughs> Days of Wonder, Cosmos, Cool Mini or Not, and I specifically wrote <coughs> Cool Mini or Not, not Simon Limited or Come On Limited, Hobby World, Ooh. Renegade Game Studios, and Asthma Day. Oh. So you guys are going to be again drafting half of these, and then the one you leave, I'll tell you what year that was founded. You'll sort the other ones. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. You go first. I well, keep losing, dude. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but does that mean he places first? Sure, but I don't care. All right. Actually, it actually helps him though. Yeah. No, 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 no. That doesn't help him necessarily, right? No, it should. If I well. No, you could technically get yours out first. Yeah. It yeah. Should be the other way, but hey, if, if that's what you want, Hat Man. 
hot man. Na 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 hot man. Na 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 na. What do you want? Swift. Wait, what did you just take? I'm not saying. Ooh, it's a game full of trickery. What do you want, Tom? Cosmos. All right. Mr. Healy, cool mini or not? See that one? Oh, I did see that. I'm not going to say them all out loud. I'm not, I'm not doing the absentee thing now. Uh, stronghold. Stronghold games. I'm taking all the bad companies. Wow. That's, that's not right. That's not okay. <clears throat> the opinions of the guests do not reflect the opinions of the 10 for 10 Institute. Bow, 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 bow. I don't know. Hold you know, on. you guys are. You know, you're going to be leaving Hobby World. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> That's true. Hobby it's, World, by the way, is a Russian be, company. To be absolutely clear, I don't know any of these. Well, you got. You have to have some idea of, that they're older or, or younger companies. Nope. Hobby World will be our starting point. Hobby World, as I said, is a Russian company, and they were founded from two other companies merging together. By the way, in. Oh, I better not look at this stuff because they're saying stuff. Oh, yep, good point. <clears throat> Hobby World 2010. Sam, don't forget you don't shuffle them. I didn't. Okay, go ahead. Pegasus Spiel. Um, so older, we're going to do... Um, Towards Sam, he's older. Yeah, we'll do that so it matches my lineup. That way, older towards... Older is this way? Yes. So the number will go down this way. Ideally. Okay. Just clarifying. Don't look at him like I'm stupid. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> you did. I'm sorry. I'm not. So I'm going to go here. You're saying that that's older. Ooh. Yes. Pegasus. Oh, it's definitely older. But when did that start? I'm going to go You're in the 80s. You're about to tell us. Just be quiet. Mm -hmm. 80s? Not quite. Uh, ha, 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 like that, yeah, like that. Uh, 1993. There you go. Give me a close. nice big window. You did. And I got Check Games Edition, which I'll just stick right in between those. That's a good guess. It's 2007. <laughs> when did I go to Essen? Because they had just started. What do you got next? Asthma Day, right there. Asthma Day. Right in between them, that nice big gap. Yep. That's a good call. That is but a it's, good call. It's not by much. What do you think it is? 1995. That's exactly right. What? It was a complete guess. <laughs> nope. Somebody has inside knowledge. I've seen Quiz Show, the movie. <laughs> That's actually a good show. <laughs> Real Grande. <clears throat> okay. Well... I, uh, it's got to be here because I want to say it's 96 or 7. Or 8. Oh, is it 8? 1998. Because I know it was after Mayfair. You didn't put Mayfair in this one. Nope, I did not. Mostly because I couldn't find it. <laughs> this was a little harder to find these dates. Ooh. Portal games. That is a tricky uh. one. Wait. He's changing his mind. No. Hmm. The first time I heard of Portal Games, I'm gonna say help in this cat. I'm gonna say right here. With I'm Narashima right Hex, here. which came out in. Oh, I don't remember. <coughs> You're putting in between 1998 and 2007. You guys are too good at this. What's the year? Whoa! Uh, let me say 05. Nope, it's actually much older than that. 1999. Oh. Really? Wow! wow. What was Zignasi doing the first six years? Uh, RPG Niroshima, I'm got guessing. Got it, got it, okay. Stronghold Games. All right, so I remember when he started, we went to Is this Origins. this your last one? No, I got two oh, more, okay. dude. <laughs> all right, I was like, wait a minute. I'm going to put Stronghold. No one skipped. You guys have gotten them all right. It was, you guys we, are beasts. We went to Origins. I want the answer to one more question. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you were there. At Origins. Okay. That was the Jack Vass Memorial Fund. Okay. So that was nine years. Wow. Okay. Well, it has to be before. It's got to be here. That's correct. Woo! Is it eight or nine? It's nine. Because it, it can't be one of the other two. 
It's 2009. Woo! Again, you guys are very, very good at this. Yeah, but now it gets tough. Now it gets a little tricky because the gaps are quite small. There would not be a year repeat, okay? Oh, that's right. Yeah, That would really throw us off. Yes, I avoided that. We keep playing. You're like, nope, nope, nope. Put it on the card. You're like, yeah. No, that would be crazy. If I did have year repeats, you could put it on either side of it. Unless I decide to include the month it was founded. Oh, my word. Then it gets real. Ooh. 10 by 10 by 10. I was upset that Dice Tower wasn't one of the... <laughs> cool mini well, they're all one. game companies. You're putting it between 98 and 99? No, 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 nope, no, no, no. a card laid. <laughs> no, I'm just putting it out there. Jesus. <laughs> um, That's a tough one. That is a tough one. Cool mini or not. Here. In between 99 and 2007. <laughs> Shut up, you. What's wrong with you? I'm just asking to confirm. Yes. Would you like to use a lifeline? <laughs> no. It's the same year as the Space Odyssey. 2001. But that's the website. I don't know when they actually started making games. They were making miniatures already. They were? Okay. Yeah, 2001, the cool mini or not. Uh, Cosmos. They're making minis. Well, I know this is an older one, but... So it has to be before 95, because that's when... Uh, that's when, uh, what's it called, came out. But um, it can't be 94. I'm putting this at the very beginning, before Pegasus. Before Pegasus, before 93. That is correct. Okay, what do you think the year is? 78. I don't know. I'm just. I don't know the how old it is. <laughs> well, 1822. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. We have one outlier. One considerable outlier. Did not. What <laughs> in the world? Well, I was kind of hoping you guys would leave that one for last. <laughs> so here's your hint. 99, Psych. 98. I'm glad we didn't leave that. Oh, you mean in the middle? Yeah, it'd be like, great, guys. Oh, it's well, that would have given, given Sam a, a, a free oh, first run. Oh, you're right. Jeez, well, but yes, Cosmos was founded in 1822. Oh, Sam on the winning thing here? This is it for the win. Days of Wonder. Ooh. Ooh what was your first game, Sam? Mm -hmm. It was, uh, ooh. Oh, it was the card game, the, the dragon one. Um, Fist of Dragonstone? No, 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 no. Dragon no. of Fist Stones. No, the Dragon. Four. The ladder climbing one. Um, Gang of Four. Gang of Several. I think Gang of Four was their first one. Mm. It's below 1822, Sam. Shut up. <laughs> this one was done they right after the chess. Revolutionary War when France came to help America. That's called the Days of Wonder. At the Battle of um, Yorkstown. French the officer Farkle rode fields. up with a copy of a game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Said U.S. and France forever. I remember that. See, here's my thing, man. 92 is when I graduated from high school. It's only just <clears throat> begun. 2001 is when I graduated from college. I'm taking notes on this in case I <laughs> have to break one of his passwords. <laughs> what so high school did you graduate from? Gonna, <laughs> also, what is your first pet's name? Shut up. <laughs> Lucky in Murphy High School. It will not help you break any of my passwords. Yeah, but well, what was your mom's maiden name? That's what I want to know. Brewer, <laughs> that also won't help. You probably shouldn't be saying this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Somebody out there is a much better hacker than I <laughs> could ever hope to be. Uh, well, stop asking me questions then. Come on, um, man. Pick a date. I can't. Put it between 98 and 99. Shut up. Um, I left? don't think it is this old. Days of Wonder is not. I don't think it's that old. That is very, very old. There's <clears throat> not enough of a gap here okay. or here, I think. But I don't think it is this old. Young. Um, I'm going to go right here. 95 between 98. Wrong. But now you know. What do you got, Tom? Renegade Games. I think. 
What do you, do you think it is? He's only been around a few years. It was when we started Gen Con. He had the booth across from us. So, uh, 13. 14. So we started with the second newest one. You Hobby did. World. You did. I think Days of Wonder is... Man, don't show off. Uh, I'm just off. guessing. Don't show off. You can both guess. I think it's here. What Although that would be tough. In 2000? If it's not there, then it's here. Because they're, they're fairly new, actually. Yeah, this was gonna, that was going to be my next well, guess. You would have been right. 2002. Ah. That's right. But so I know 2002. Five, right? But on the back of that, we write Sam <laughs> equals <laughs> Le Who Zahel. Hey! Now we can't. Yeah. Now we can't use that card again. I know, right? <laughs> These are all recycled. I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, that's ten for ten, Tom. You won one. Back in the saddle, You're baby. You're back in, man. <laughs> all right, everybody. Let's keep on rolling. Hello, and welcome back to Retro Board Game Corner. Here I have GoBots, Mighty Robots, Mighty Vehicles, published in 1985 by Golden. This is a two to four player game in which you're racing to get to the command center first. Let me set this up and show you how it works. This is what the game board will look like set up. Everybody's going to pick their favorite GoBots, whether it be Psykill, Turbo, Crasher, or Leader One. On every turn, you'll spin the spinner and move that number of squares, whether you be a robot or a vehicle. If you're a vehicle, you'll go to these double spaces here. Robot, you'll just count each single space. On a blast off space, you send another player anywhere on the board. On the spin again, you'll just go ahead and spin again and move again. The object of the game is to get here to the command center first and spin the number that you spun to get there. If you can do that first before the other players, you have won this simple game. Even though the GoBots debuted one year before the Transformers, they considered the GoBot the poor man's Transformer because they were a lot cheaper to buy than Transformers were. And also to get them into vehicle form took maybe one or two movements where the Transformers were a little bit more complex. Well, guess which ones my mother bought me? That's right, GoBots. I was the laughing stock of my neighborhood. Well, that's all the time I have for now. If you have a comment, comment below, or you can tweet them to me at RetroBoardGamer. And as always, may your rolls be high. Hi, I'm Jordan. This is Second Chance Shelf, where I take a look back at an older game and see if it deserves a second chance off your shelf. Today, we are going to look at Puerto Rico, have a little chat about that one. I um, recently had a chance to pull this off the shelf with a couple friends a couple weeks ago. And I hadn't played it for a couple years. Uh, this was one of the first games that got me into gaming. It was the top game on, port on uh, Board Game Geek, of course, and so I wanted to play it. And I really enjoyed it. I really loved the role selection, the action selection, and how you could take turn, take you know, es essentially take turns on other people's turns. That was really cool. Um, and I still think the game holds up. Um, the you know, it has that timeless feel to it. Um, but with that all being said, I'm not sure I'm going to be keeping Puerto Rico or even looking to play it again in the future and it ends up coming down to some of the thematic elements in the game. In Puerto Rico your plantation owners growing selling and trading crops uh, with the other players and but the, the plantation owner the plantation workers are very clearly slaves and that made me feel really uncomfortable the last time I played it. Um, I mean Yes, the game has a historical element. Slaves existed, plantations existed, this all happened. But in the world of board games, there's infinite number of themes. And I can pick any number of games off my shelf that have similar mechanisms and a similar feel, but don't give me that uncomfortable feeling. You know, does that make sense? I, I don't want you to go to the comments and talk about how I'm being too sensitive or how the world's becoming too politically correct, but I want you to think about in your games, is there, are there thematic elements that take it too far? And where do you draw the line? And do you even have a line? If not, that's fine. That, I don't care. Um, you know, there's so many games out there. I'm not going to force you to play anything you don't want to. And you're not going to force me to play anything I, want, I don't want to. So I think we're all cool. But yeah, just think about where do you draw the line when it comes to theme? Um, yeah, happy breakfast.
This is Roy Canny, and this is Five, where I take a look at my top five things in a game. Today we're going to be taking a look at the different factions in Ethnos. So my number five is fairies. They're kind of cool because they let you switch out a warband that you've already created with someone else's warband. These are especially brutal when you pair them with skeletons in the game because the skeletons go away. Um, definitely an interesting, fun faction, and they're one of the promos you could get from, I think, Simon Expo or something like that. My number four is the giants. The giants are trying to play the biggest band to steal this giant token, which you get points when you take it, and then you get points at the end of each round. It's definitely fun trying to take that back and forth from people and figure out how you can make bigger warbands of giants. Giants. Then my number three is the dwarves. Dwarves help you to get those bigger war bands to get extra points at the end of each round. And it's just cool because it's dwarves. So uh, definitely my number three. Three. My number two is the wizards. If you play a whole bunch of wizards, you get to draw a bunch of extra cards after you build your warband and place your stuff out. And it's cool to like play a giant warband and then refill your hand with tons of cards and then hopefully have a bunch of cool stuff that you can play again. Um, and then my number one, I know it's cheesy, but it's the centaurs because they allow you to play a second warband during your turn and it makes those like combos where you take one area and then another area or just helps you to get a bunch of cards out of your hand when you have centaurs in there. Well, that's my top five for Ethnos. Thank you so much for joining me and let's get on to the next one. Feed my fat face! <laughs> Snack. All right, we actually have three boxes of snacks, so we're gonna do two today oh just to get through them. Okay. Okay. So we have to eat everything in the box. <laughs> I changed my question immediately. This one is from one of our viewers, so I accidentally opened it because I thought it was something else. Okay, I'm gonna do a blind taste test. No, no, no. A lot of these are normal snacks. Well, I'm still gonna do a blind taste. A lot of these are normal snacks, best. like Andy's hot fries and. <laughs> Pirate's Booty, aged white <laughs> cheddar, which is unfortunately named. So, thank you to our oh listeners my. for sending us these, because these are snacks we will eat. But, but, there's a few in here. Oh, what's that? I don't know what this is. Funky fish. That's shrimp stuff. No, Ooh. that's fish. Oh. So, we're going to take out the normal ones, and we'll eat a couple of the uh, weird yeah, the, ones. But then we have another box. Had. Oh, my. Jeez, How, why are we doing more than one box? Box, man, are you crazy? This no, 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 no. This is. I'm just this pulling out. This is mostly out. normal stuff. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's. Here we go. Okay. What do you think this is? Okay, that looks like a person riding a tiger, or maybe like climbing a tree. But what kind of food do you think it is? Salty, puffy things. Oh, there you go. What's it taste like? Oh, a jelly stick. Yeah, man. A stick of jelly. Stick jelly. That says the so. It's a salty, curry. puffy thing. <laughs> you were not wrong. Would you eat those like though for fun? Like if I'm really, really bored? Yes, unfortunately, I do have that condition. <laughs> I don't think you should be pointing it out that I stress eat. Stress eat. <laughs> Here you go. Try these. Um. Why? Because we've all licked it. Ew. All right, this now. This is like Captain Crunch cereal, man. But it's what is this? This looks like a dead prune. <laughs> this looks like Captain Crunch cereal. Look at that. Okay, so this is some sort of little puffy fish. This is like nothing. I'm... All right, who's going to eat this? I was expecting a stronger... I'll eat that, man. I don't care. I mistreat my body. What, what do you mean this? you don't care? What about this one? This has just foreign language on it, no pictures. I'll try it. I bet it's not food. Man. It looks like candy. Oh, this is good. What kind of candy do you think it is? It's brown. Root beer. Plum. <laughs> yeah. Plum. Coming from, yeah, no. That's ginseng. Cyanide. <laughs> Iocane powder. So it's tasteless? Yes. Because you ain't These are good. Yet. These are a little bit sweet, actually. It's a little licorice-y. Try that. All right, let's now let's right. go to our Try real that. box here. But first of all, that's super great of someone to send that to us. 
So now I want these snack boxes. Hey, man, I'm still eating the first snack. Well, I know. I'm going to start opening this Go while ahead. you're pigging out there. No, this is actually good. They are good. Yeah. Oh, what is this? It's like a fluffy stick. I thought this would be solid. This one is from Spain. All right. All right. My Which ancestors. has the greatest airport we've ever been to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, now what is this, fellas? It's like a Twinkie Kay. that's been demoralized. <laughs> 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 Look, it's a that thing. looks like a huge Cheeto. All it's right. like it's like a Twinkie that's been dehydrated. They took out the filling. It's a space. It's a space Twinkie. I don't think I can bite it because then I'm like getting all up on it. All right. So in the Spain box, it's a Cheeto. That's a straight up Cheeto. <laughs> <laughs> Try that. <laughs> that tastes exactly like a Cheeto. We have spicy mangoes. Oh. Try it. That's a cheese puff. That's a cheese puff, man. That's a oh. Cheeto. There you go. All right, mango. Spicy no, mango. spicy mangoes. Hit me. Ooh, these are cute. Ooh, these are super neat shapes. They're kind of... Th they're chewy. They have a nice consistency. Wow, that's weird. It's exactly what it says. It tastes like mango. Do you like mango? Not necessarily. Well, hello, it just hit me. <laughs> yeah, it's like mango, it's and then it's like sweet. Also like, I mean, it's not that spicy. sweet. Spicy. Here, editor. It, you got to get in on this, man. You've never had a spicy mango like this. I like those. You know, I get. Those are awesome. Do you like it? I can't tell because you're, no, like, you're like jumping around from. I don't like that. Here's fried. I love egg. the shape. I like the taste, but it's a spicy I mango. I don't like the texture. Oh, you don't like chewy stuff? No, 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 no. Uh, the texture with something that's spicy should not have that texture. For oh, me. I right. disagree. But These I want to train a bad dog with this. The flavor: fried oh. egg. Oh. What is it now? Fried egg potato chips. Yeah, but I'm still eating a spicy mango. Mm. Oh, the coffee didn't even take the taste away. They got the flavor right. Tastes like a fried egg. Huevo frito. Oh, you can read that? I sure can. <laughs> and on the bag. And on the bag. Hey, we didn't try this it one. It says, ingredientes, patatas seleccionadas, aceite de girasol. What's that for, uh, what does this aroma. mean? Aroma. What does this mean? Oh, oh ham. this is one of those things where it's got a lollipop on it, you, and it's got powder in it. So sure, we that's we'll give that to a kid. So we open it like this. Poof. <laughs> Here, try the fried egg one, and this is a uh, ham. Ham potato chips. I think you eat them together. Yes. Wow. Breakfast chips. <laughs> Healthy breakfast brought to you well, by. The oh my breakfast. goodness! How did they do that? I, that's what it tastes like that a fried egg. It's like an egg. <laughs> How? Did, what sorcery is this? <laughs> and this tastes a little like ham. It's a fried egg. Mm. That's just like a fried egg. <laughs> With this one? Yeah. Yes. It's like you just picked it up out of the pan and ate the fried egg. <laughs> That's ham. No, ham got, and eggs. Oh, I, gotta, yeah. I gotta have a sandwich. <laughs> Give me that bread. <laughs> We have to do its own show. Back talk. I mean, <laughs> snack talk needs to become its own. This is amazing. Ham and eggs. Not so much. You can't. You, the the egg overpowers the ham. I agree. I want to try the ham by itself. Mmm, that's good. Those are not bad flavors. I'm subscribing to El Valle. Yeah, but there is there is a lot of salt on that egg one though. I don't care about that. <laughs> Sodium's good for you. All right. Mm. Did you try this? Those, these just taste like a potato chip. Mm -hmm. they don't, I don't taste the ham in that. Fried egg, baby. The what boca bits put, mean? Those are amazing. Boca just means mouth. <laughs> <laughs> mouth bits? <laughs> are these? They these, look like they look, they look like, like pork um, rinds. Yeah. Nah, All right. We're almost done with the segment. Hang on. Some fried eggs. Mmm. Mmm. Some boca bits. Wow. That is just. That blows my mind. You like those then? No, it. Well, yeah, I like it, but I can't believe how 
similar the taste is. I don't disagree. It's crazy. These are okay. Oh. Are they just pork rinds? They're not pork. It's what like eating it? chocolate with an Oreo inside it. I'm not gonna hit that right now. <clears throat> Say what? No way. Look at that. I'm gonna die if I try to consume that right now. Would you Might like too late. A, Filip a Filipino from Spain? <laughs> Looks like a little donut. It's a little donut, I guess. That is excellent. This Spain pack is beating the Hawaii pack we got yeah, last yeah, year. All right, now I'm going to try Good. a donut. A Filipino, I mean. Oh, these are... Tastes exactly like those cookies that have the chocolate lines across right, them. Right, the Keebler or whatever that's called, yeah. Right. Choco cream con cachitos Tastes exact same. de galeta negra. Mm-hmm. All right. Did I what? that? No. Relleno de crema y Let's go to some contributors. trocitos de la gueta negra. <laughs> Hi folks, my name is Andy and welcome to Portable Gaming. The show about games which are fun to play in pubs and cafes. So today I'm going to take on an adventure in which you and your family are going to fight against a rival clan in a bloodthirsty battle to try and take over the sacred border stones of your village. Or maybe not, but this is a very interesting, deep technical game of Shot and Tom. I believe this has previously been known as Battle Line, and the game is very simple. You are, you are trying to win a certain number of these stones, either three in a row or five overall, and you do this by playing cards from your hand. Each card is a numbered card with a different colour suit, and you're trying to build the best possible sets of these of up to three cards per side. These can be things such as a colour run, so a high run of numbers, all of the same colour, different three of a kind, get three of the same cards there, and there's different strengths to each one. Once you've built the best possible hand on your side, if, you can, if you've beaten your opponent or can prove they can't beat you, you take one of these stones. And you go back and forth until you've won either those three so adjacent stones or five overall. This game is fantastic. It's such an interesting tactical dilemma. You and your opponent back and forth there, psyching each other out, going, I'm going to play a card here to make you think I've got something brewing when I've got something else brewing entirely. Or I'm going to wait till I can see you've definitely been trying to build that specific run and I'm going to play the card that you need to finish that run somewhere else to show that I'm going to win here. And it makes it so deep, so tactical, so psychological, such back and forth. And it's quick, it is fun, and the art is adorable. Uh, some might say it's I don't think so. It's just adorable, comedy Scottish characters. And it is not a big table hog, although I can, it's stretching the realms of the mat here, but that is fun. Uh, the deck, the cards are standard, the playing cards side. There is actually expert cards inside. I've never even had to use because I find that the base game is just so much fun. Um, but I highly recommend this. So that is Shot and Totten by Rainer Knizia. Anyway, thanks very much. I'm Randy, and it's your round. Hi, Mike Delisio from Solo Mode Games. Today I want to talk a little bit about co-op games. As a solo gamer, co-op games are something that I have a particular fondness for because, generally speaking, almost all uh, co-op games can be played as a solo game right out of the box. But I also really enjoy playing co-op games in groups. And recently I've been seeing what seems to me anyway to be an increased number of people that are kind of pushing back against co-op games in general and saying that they don't particularly like playing them. The most common argument that I see against co-op games is what can be called the alpha gamer or the quarterbacking issue where maybe one particular person is pushing their agenda on how the game should be played and maybe even going as far as taking other people's turns for them. And I've been hearing that maybe this is just a flaw in the cooperative game, you know, concept. And I tend to disagree with that. I don't think that that's necessarily a problem with the game. I tend to think that maybe that's a problem with that particular gamer. Anybody who would feel comfortable in pushing their agenda and, and even taking other people's turns, I tend to think that that's maybe a problem that that person needs to address rather than the game itself. But I'd be interested to hear, for people that don't generally like cooperative games, can you take that alpha gamer argument out of the mix? If, if you just don't consider that, and I know that might be hard because that tends to be the most common complaint, what else is it? Is there anything else about co-op games that you just don't like? Is it strictly that you need to have a competitive element for a game to be compelling to you? Uh, I'd really like to hear what 
other arguments people might have against cooperative games. It might help me better understand why there's a bit of a backlash that I've been seeing. So if you can let me know in the comments below why you don't particularly like co-op games, especially if you go outside of that alpha gamer argument, I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for your time as always, and have a great day. Oh, the Filipino. Oh, let's go. So. Thanks for watching. I don't think so. He's still deciding whether to eat the prune or not. All right. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back in two hours or less, a little bit less than an hour and 50 minutes to do our top 10 exploration games. Come back for fun, excitement, and at least 30 games, 30 different games. There will be no overlap. That Is there no overlap, Roy? Okay, never mind. There's overlap, whatever. All right. <clears throat> we'll see you then. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. See you later. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.